we have it then. Mark and Sheila are here, all masked up. Bruce is here. Bruce is here, Candace. He's not on the Zoom. And now we up. You're up and running everywhere. Jack, do you see us on the live stream? It's going to take a few minutes. You're still near to Jack? No, there it is. No, I'm still looking at that screen. I have not seen it on the live screen. Okay, well, it's coming. It's on. Do I have to do update there? Yes. Yeah, it's Uh-oh. on Candy. Yes, you would. I'm looking at it right now. Yes. Live stream. I'm looking at it right now. Mark is able to see it on his of. Uh, is a, a phone there, so we're live streaming and we are on channel 194, so I'm going to start the meeting. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Monday, April 20th, 2020 Board of Selectmen meeting coming to you virtually through Zoom uh, and being shown on channel 194 and as well as live streaming. Our first agenda item is called to order. Candace, please. Candace Bouchard. Todd Shalashi. Melissa Bird. Bob Geiger. Uh, Candy Perez. Sheila Sedlak. Well, Jack, Sheila comes for first. I, I didn't know she was on here. She's Sorry. here. Yeah. They can't see you, Sheila. Oh. <laughs> so, Jack, okay. Next. Stephen Sedlak. Pleasure, Bravo. Okay, great. Would you please join us for a pledge to allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Uh, next is approval of minutes. I have a motion uh, to approve. Okay, thank you, Candace. May I have a second? Okay, Melissa. Second. Thank you. Any corrections for Sheila? Anything? Okay, all in favor? Looks unanimous. Thank you. Next one up is the town manager's report, Bob. All right, let me give you uh, just kind of a synopsis. Last week, April the 6th through the 12th, Monday, uh, start off Monday, I start off almost every morning now gathering information regarding the COVID-19 uh, in terms of update plans with our uh, emergency manager director, Steve Williams, who's doing a, an awesome job. He's really doing, stepped up and doing this extremely well. So we uh, anticipate any issues for the day and review the history from the day before. Uh, I also met with the town hall staff and discussed what's going on. Our staff is now minimal. We're down to just a handful of people uh, in town hall. We're minimal staff. Um, although, of course, the school is out. Uh, the school administration is gone. That's much of it. The police is off. The police department is also down there. Uh, we have um, the... the uh, Land, land office is still staff. Pam is there and, and uh, Steve Williams. Uh, we've also got one one person in uh, the clerk's office, one in tax collection. Our assessor is working from home. Uh, Bruce is in. So I guess uh, I mean we're still we're still running town hall. We're just not allowing people to walk in the door. We've had a couple of special meetings that couldn't be done effectively uh, if, uh, over a social media. Had a couple of meetings the past two weeks, uh, just from the engineering standpoint. There were only less than five people in the meeting. Uh, we don't have any schedule this week. Uh, let's see, so I also met with the rec department. I also went over to the senior center. Jen's doing a, a wonderful job over there. We're still providing free meals uh, for pickup uh, for, at uh, a luncheon meal. Uh, I, I meet with the, the police department every day as we go over issues that they have and try to maintain their safety and cleanliness down there. Uh, we had a board of selectmen meeting that Monday. Uh, Tuesday I had discussions with Public Works regarding the capital budget 
because we're trying to anticipate uh, a tough year coming up in terms of, of uh, cash flow. So we're, we're scrutinizing every project that we've had planned originally. Uh, I had a discussion with some of the Lake residents regarding building code issues. Uh, Pam has those issues almost every week. I occasionally get involved with those. Uh, I, again, an update, emergency preparedness director of conference with Steve Williams. Uh, I also coordinate with other area town CEOs regarding the Royal Bay Parades and other activities. We all kind of coordinate with each other within the club so we can try to coordinate who's doing what and work with each other. Uh, that was first like with Don Stein regarding common issues with border maintenance. We have border maintenance issues because we are a budding town and have roads that, uh, in terms of road maintenance and snow plowing and things that occasionally have to be worked out and improved. Uh, we've got a very good working relationship with uh, Mark Hampstead. I also met with Attorney Stedronski, who's the attorney for our senior apartments, uh, regarding apartments, uh, finance, and audit issues that we go over every year. Uh, Wednesday, I met with the Northwest Health uh, Preparation Meeting regarding COVID-19 issues. We had a conference call with the governor's office regarding COVID-19. There have been several of those this week. This week. There are mainly uh, update calls. Uh, the rules are changing constantly, and uh, the governor is uh, a lot of adjustments and keeps, I think he keeps the towns fairly well informed as well as the emergency management directors. There are five emergency management zones. Uh, so uh, our, uh, ours is, uh, I think, the zone number five. Steve coordinates very well with them. Uh, Thursday, we had a, uh, a Northwest Park Zoom meeting. So that Thursday, we had a Zoom meeting. And we had a Zoom that went fairly well for our first Zoom meeting. Um, and you know, we had uh, an update coordination with emergency manager preparedness, not only with Steve, but with some of the other COG emergency managers. I met with uh, Chief Fitzgerald regarding virus safety procedures. Uh, we just now call all of our police cruisers. We may have to do that on a regular basis. Uh, each police cruiser has come in and has basically sterilized the entire interior of each cruiser. Uh, I also did some uh, light property inspections. We're still continuing that, along with Bill Velosky, who is our uh, temporary uh, building official, and Mark has been out ill. He just returned today. Uh, Friday, we, uh, again, COVID-19 issues uh, reacted to uh, new information. Uh, I met with the town hall staff, uh, again, several of them, the public works, the senior center, again, the rec department and the police department regarding personnel issues. Uh, Saturday, had a telephone conference call with Chief Fitzgerald regarding uh, issues during the COVID situation. I also had a conference call with Jim Rollins and Tuffy Cooper uh, discussing uh, virus planning relative to public works. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, just say, in terms of emails and voicemails and telephone calls, Liz Bodley in the office up here, Roy and I are both up here, we're experiencing about three times the number of calls that we normally receive. Uh, many of them are duplicates uh, in terms of emails. But it's better right now to be over it for the number of calls. Uh, this week, April the 13th to the 19th, again, updates every morning on COVID-19. I met with uh, Jim Kelly again regarding the senior center staff. Uh, we've got a minimal staff over there. And the staff we had downstairs in the state program for developmentally uh, disabled. Uh, that program continues in terms of off-site coordination so the people are still involved to operate that. Uh, that's a grant program from a uh, special state, the state DDS. Uh, I also had a site visit with Jim, Jim Rollins going up uh, Lake Street regarding the sidewalk and water damage and repairs that we hope to be able to make this year. We can't reconstruct the entire sidewalk, but a lot of people want to see that happen, so would we. In the meantime, in the interim, we're just trying to figure out how to maintain the uh, traffic flow and, and pedestrian flow on that street. I also had a conference call with the mayor uh, regarding the, our forward budgets and uh, some citizens' property complaints. I also had a call with Kevin Nelligan. I had two calls with Nelligan regarding lawsuit updates. And so we continue to have issues that we don't know would have. Uh, I also met with Public Works dis discussing engineering updates and uh, documents required by signature and, and assessment. Tuesday, I met with Chris Chief Fitzgerald regarding a citizen complaint. So I get one of our animal control officers, which is a, uh, an ongoing issue we're trying to resolve with a citizen. Uh, I also met with Public Works, again, on capital projects. 
had more engineering requirements, which is one of the issues we're going to discuss later on tonight in terms of the Bridge Street, Bridge Street Engineering Development Plan. Uh, I also met with our finance director, Bruce. He and I meet frequently. Talked about the impact of COVID-19 on our budget, so we're going to talk a little more about that this evening in terms of revenue and the impact, potential impact of that. Uh, and I toured several of, of the properties with our interim building official to uh, provide some input for him so he could complete the task in, uh, in Mark's absence. Wednesday, I met with Chief Fitzgerald regarding uh, we had we've had issues with the citizens' complaints about young people gathering up at the state boat launch and not adhering to the social distancing. So we discuss what we can and can't do in that situation. I also met with our school superintendent came in that day, talked about uh, the COVID-19 impact on her budget, what the state requirements are in terms of compensation for all school employees right now while the school is not in session. Uh, we'll hear more about school budgets later on this whole next month probably. I uh, met with our finance director again regarding water and senior payment plan, which you're gonna hear about here shortly. And uh, also uh, met uh, with, uh, with just updated on the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, which we weren't able to believe. I don't think we completed all those yet. I've been a problem because of the COVID situation right now and the meeting. Uh, met with Public Works regarding the Sue Grossman Trail Engineering Plans. Uh, I've got some pretty elaborate uh, conversations going on with the engineering firm and our engineer. We are very frustrated with the amount of time and the amount of cost by engineering plans in the state DEP. Uh, we think we've got another uh, interim plan going forward to try to accelerate this. Uh, we, got, we also had a conference call regarding the COVID-19 again on Wednesday. Thursday, we had an update and coordination again, a meeting with Steve Williams, uh, just like another COVID meeting. Uh, met with public works regarding special projects and updates and what we can and can't complete. Um, was that the day it snowed? We were getting ready for snow plan. I guess that was on Friday. Um, I met with the Board of Selectmen on the Finance Subcommittee. We had a Zoom meeting, as you all are aware, and as many of you here this evening, uh, talking about the uh, uh, process going forward with the strategy in terms of uh, taxation. Uh, we also had a Hinsdale Renovation School Board Committee Zoom meeting discussing where we are on the Hinsdale Renovation Project. I think this is some the good news was introduced, and we'll hear more about that uh, later on in the next couple of weeks. Again, I met with our attorney on the senior apartment updates, uh, uh, Jim Stavrosky. He's, the, as I said, the attorney for all the senior apartments. Uh, and we had a conference call with our environmental attorney regarding the potential solar project, which is, uh, has been requested uh, by an outside agency to be, to be installed in the Winchester area. That's the project is still being evaluated. Uh, we also then had a Chamber of Commerce at Zoom meeting discussing uh, the Chamber right now is going to, as they go through with uh, uh, all of their, uh, their contention of, of businesses are all struggling right now. And uh, this Chamber of Commerce is trying to figure out how to help them out. And then I also had a call, we had a couple of calls with the American Bureau Project as they're looking for more grant funding uh, through, this, through this dilemma right now. Uh, Friday met with Public Works regarding, oh, that was the snow preparation. We were all kind of a little disappointed that we had to put the files back on the trucks and load up some salt and sand because the roads were finally clean and we just messed them up again. It was all melted a day later, but nonetheless, it required some plowing for the higher elevations. Uh, then I had a conference call with our library board members. As you know, the libraries closed along with the school project, but the demand, our entire staff is staying busy right now with the e-books and uh, answering questions and servicing the, our clients. Uh, again, I had another uh, discussion with our environmental attorney regarding the Connecticut Siding Council, which has to approve uh, the solar project. Um, so that's kind of a summary of where we are right now. Uh, questions? Comments? I have a question. So we did hire a, an environmental attorney for the solar panels? We have. Department D. They're the same environmental attorneys, not the same particular attorney, but the same agency that, that uh, dealt with our uh, Lambert Code uh, building. So, so how right much? Now it's, just, it's an experimental hire, and they're just reviewing to see if they can do us any good or not. So it's not an official hire, it's a, a tentative uh, offer that uh, uh, 
they made to us when I requested they review what we've got to see if we do want to hire them. We haven't decided that yet. Steve? Yeah, I thought of Bob, regarding the solar uh, project, uh, uh, I, I sat in on the planning and zoning meeting last week, and there was uh, some brief discussion about the project. <laughs> Planning and zoning refers back to the back to the building department, uh, as, uh, which was overseen by Pam right now. And then there were there were enough questions that were beyond our scope legally. That's what I thought I'd do first was pursue some uh, some legal context to, to see if, if they could help us in this matter or not. So at some point in time, if we hire an attorney, I can come back to you, the selectman, and say I, I need to hire an attorney to pursue the investigation. It's, uh, it's beyond any of our scopes here within this building to decide where we go. So right now, I hope they will hear back to probably by tomorrow. I have this a conversation with them uh, today and Friday. Uh, so I'll come back. I'll come back to you guys with a recommendation. Okay, and then we refer to planning and zoning. Is that how the process works? Uh, yes, and because this is a Connecticut Siting Council, they. They, they have authority to uh, to approve this project, whether you like it or not, which is frustrating me, which is why I wanted to seek out the information. Yeah, I would just ask the fellow selectmen, if you haven't already taken a look at the website that uh, has the proposal, uh, take a look at it. This is a big project, and uh, it's going to have some impact. Uh, I'm not necessarily for or against solar energy, but uh, this, is, this is a big project. Star is the name of the company, uh, and I, I just, I'm not convinced we have all the data yet, so I, I just want to get some professional opinion before I come back. Yeah, go ahead, Candace. Candace? Who owns the property? It's, a, it's a, a, a prior owner. It was the property in Winchester that was originally approved for a housing development. I don't know how many years ago that was, Candace. Uh, that was back in the uh, uh, early 2000s. Yeah. So who owns the property? Steve Trinkus. Pardon? Steve Trinkus. Trinkus. Okay. Uh, through his through his company. Right, so it's not town owned. Oh, it's not town owned property, no. I didn't think so. The plan is still eight acres of solar panels and then they were gonna donate uh, like seventy something, eighty something acres to the land trust uh, surrounding the uh, the parcel. Any other questions for Bob? Okay, we're going to go to the finance report. And in order to do this, Bruce is here. So I'm going to turn my computer and hopefully catch Bruce. Um, before I do that, I'm going to change my background uh, so that I have none. And that way you can see Bruce. And then he's going to talk through the microphones here, so hopefully loud enough for everybody to hear. And, um, and uh, that. so I will go to speaker view, and then don't anybody say anything, so I could show up. Okay, Bruce, you want to? Can you see you in there? There he is. You're like a lone man way out there. Okay. Well, I'm pleased to give you some uh, uh, summary information about the uh, activities in the general fund through March 31st, 2020, which Perhaps represents. Can hear him. I can't. Nope. I can't. No one can hear you, Bruce. Okay. Do All I right. Need, so, do I need to speak into the? You need to come over do you here. You want me to come over there? So okay. wait a second. We have a plan. We do. We do. I feel like I'm stepping to the podium. There you go. Okay, well, I'm pleased to provide you with some summary information about the uh, activities of the general fund through March 31st, 
2020, which represents 75% of the fiscal year. So uh, with respect to revenues, property tax revenues uh, have come in at $23.8 million, which represents 99% of the budget. This compares to $23.6 million last year at this time, which was also 99% of the budget. As always, I'd like to thank the uh, taxpayers in town for making timely payments. Total revenues for um, the general fund through, um, through March 31st are at 85% of the budget compared to 86% last year. Uh, we are still waiting for town aid road um, monies from the state. There was a bond uh, commission meeting last week where those funds were approved for, um, for bonding. So we expect that that aid will be in hopefully by the end of this month. Total expenditures are at 69% of the budget or $23.5 million. Last year at this time, we were at a similar uh, level, $23.4 million. So expenditures are tracking as they did last year. Um, our cash flow uh, position at the end of March was $13.5 million. 12.8 uh, of that was, 12.8 million of that was uh, invested and produced uh, produced uh, just under $14,000 of interest income during uh, the month of March. So happy to answer any questions. We reviewed m most of these details with the Finance Subcommittee on Thursday. Just talk about the, um, during the agenda item down below, you talk about all that data with that. Do you want me to do that now? Uh, no. Okay. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll be around to talk about uh, the agenda item with respect to the uh, taxpayer collection relief programs. We're all set. No one's okay. Yet. I'll give it back to Candy. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so next up on our agenda is citizens' comments. Um, oops, there we go. We made it really big. Right. Don't want to do that. So, sorry, my hand is wet from the Lysol sanitizer wipe and sending everything everywhere. So, uh, citizens' comments, if you'd like to call in, the number is 860 738. Six nine five eight. Again, if you'd like to call in to comment, eight six zero seven three eight six nine five eight. We have another section for citizens' comments later on. If you can't make it right now, but want to call later, oh, here comes one. Hello. Hello. John Wiarda speaking. John Wiarda. Okay. Uh, Hello. Your address, John please. 16 Superior Street, Winston, Connecticut. Okay, we got feedback going on. John, can you turn off your TV in the background? Yes. Okay, that's better now for us. Okay, can you hear me? All right, can people hear him? Okay, yes. Okay, oh. go ahead, John. Okay, yeah, I just had a couple of uh, items I wanted to talk about. Uh, one of them happened today. It was a tractor trailer that decided to uh, not take a left on to Rockwell Street. He came up to East Lake, made a left, and then he tried to go down uh, Superior Street which uh, he got down the bottom of the hill and figured he didn't, couldn't make the turn because he had a 53-foot trailer behind him. 
So he had to back up Superior Street and then back out onto the East Lake Street again and then go back down around and get on Lake Street and go down to Rockwell Street. Uh, this has been happening too many times. I don't know why they're doing it. If they're coming up the hill and just don't see the turn for Rockwell Street or their GPS is taking them the wrong way or what. Um, the second question is, uh, or not a question, but remember we have the two uh, electric vehicle charging stations for electric vehicles or hybrid uh, vehicles. Uh, I'd like to see a little activity down there when I drive by once in a while. So uh, if anybody has an electric vehicle car, feel free to use them. Thank you. Okay, you all set, John? Hello? I'm going to hang up, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, bye. Okay, I think he's off. So, um, okay, so anybody want to say anything for either of those, Bob? You all set? Couldn't hear anything. Couldn't hear a thing. Okay, he brought up uh, two, two things. He wanted us to tell, make sure everybody knew that we had the two electric charging stations at the old Bank of America building. And the second thing, he was concerned about the tractor trailer coming up East Lake, turning left onto Rockwell and trying to go down I mean, going all the way up on East Lake, turning down that Superior Street, trying to get to that. And he's wondering if it's a GPS thing, uh, if there's a way for to correct that. Let me answer that. He called me. I was up there about 15 minutes after he called. Uh, it's the uh, there's one manufacturing company at the end of Rockwell, right below Superior Street. Occasionally, a, a tractor trailer comes comes up. Uh, and ends up on Lake Street instead of turning on Rockwell and then tries to come down Superior and then turn left on the Rockwell. It's not possible. So as a result, this was a 53-foot trailer, got stuck, he tried to back up, which he did with great difficulty, up the hill, in reverse, up Superior, uh, in front of, of uh, John's house. Uh, so <coughs> banning trailer trucks is, is not a purpose. What I think we need to do is place a sign on Lake Street explaining where the technology company is that the trucks are going to go to with a large arrow so they don't end up passing Rockwell and going all the way up the lake. So that's the approach that we're going to take. Uh, rather, just banning the trucks is, is uh, by the time they're banned, they've already passed where they need to be. And, and they're not doing it intentionally. They get up there and get lost. So we're going to try to give them more specific directions because that's the only manufacturing place that the trucks are moving. So we'll give them make a sign appropriate for that particular facility and appropriate directional error pointed in that way. Is the man What's your time frame for that, Bob? Time I, don't frame that, I don't know how fast I can get a sign made for that. I was just up there today to look at it. Uh, well, we may, we'll probably have a private one made because I don't think I could. And part of the problem is going to be um, that's part of a state road on the way up. But, uh, we can figure that out. That also should be as the in the logistics department of the organization itself, where they should get instructions, maybe to call when you're at Route 44 or something, and get the They're a manufacturing company dealing with several, several, they can try it, but I, I think the signage could be better. I could see how they could easily pass Rockwell. It looks like it's a, a residential neighborhood, so they drive right by it. And by the time they've passed it, they've now got a, a 50 or 60 foot trailer that's very difficult to turn around. But you're right. I mean, we can. But I, well, I, we think the dedicated sign should uh, alleviate uh, that problem. Yeah, I think the sign should help, but it, it needs to start at the manufacturer. That's not. That's not going to happen. We can. We can ask them. But, uh, without the sign, the sign should should really we think correct most of the problem. Well, I talked to them, but you can ask them to call. They're a manu major manufacturer. They're they're not going to be able to coordinate with every truck that's coming in because they don't know what time they're coming. But. We they can try. They do coordinate with every truck that comes into their building. I've I, I brought major manufacturing companies with a lot of trucks. I know how difficult it is to drive trucks to major place. So right now, let's start with the science here we get. Anything else? Okay, number eight is correspondence. Anybody have any correspondence they wanted to highlight? to all of us on April 13th about the difficulty he's having for customers to do pickup and also for vendors to do delivery. I had made a suggestion that we mark off two spaces 
who held our retail customers on, you know, especially during this time. Seattle did it, initiated this for, or Oregon, initiated this as a coronavirus earlier in the year. I don't see why we can't help out our retail customers during this time until May 20th by marking up dedicated pickup zones for those that are requesting assistance. If you went out there and put two orange cones in front of your shop during business hours, it would probably be okay. The state probably wouldn't respond to that, but that's a state route. And I think I told you before, you've heard this, the state does not allow us to put up signs on Main Street. We're not allowed to put up no parking signs. Now, the state doesn't, it's been exacerbated because the people that live in those apartments around there, most of them are out of work now, so now their cars are on Main Street, even more so than normal. But it is a problem for restaurants that want to have pickup. Well, the state- Communicated with them for any help at all, like we can't put cones on a sidewalk, not on the parking spaces, say pickup and delivery only. We can do that, and I think that would help. He needs to do that. We can't do that. He needs to do that, and I can work with him to try to suggest that he do that. Well, but that's a- I do not have the authority to control parking on Main Street. But we did have the authority to have two hour parking. We do have the right, and had a whole parking meter lady be able to set the timing for parking. So how can we have no control on residential parking? Those same spots, that was not maintained, and then the state took that back over again, because I tried to put in parking stripes to designate parking areas to maximize the parking along there. So I've asked Jimmy and Bart to work with the state to put in a request to allow us to put signs up to say two hour parking limited, and no overnight parking on particular pieces of that. So we're trying to figure it out, but right now, it took us three months to get the speed signs put up on the island. So we could actually write a letter to the governor, Friends of Main Street could request- Oh yeah, absolutely. I'd like all the help we can get. Okay, anything else? Okay, boards and commissions, Steve. Thank you, Jimmy. We have on our list tonight, in terms of appointments, we have Kim Huber, who is interested in the recreation board. We presented her name at the last meeting. This will be the second presentation, and I would place her name in, I would hope that we place the name of Kim Huber in nomination for the recreation board, and we will vote on that next month. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to appointments. We have two. First of all, I would move to reappoint Chris Kiley as a member of the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. His term to expire in April of 2023. A second. Thank you, Candace. All in favor? Steve, are you voting? I am. Okay, you're froze on your video. There you are. Okay, unanimous. Thank you. Okay. And secondly, I would like to nominate, place nomination, Tim Moran for reappointment to the Water and Sewer Commission. His term to expire in June of 2025. A second. Okay. That's just a nomination, right, Steve? No, it's a reappointment. It's for reappointment. Oh, okay. All right, so we have this nomination and second. All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Anybody else for boards and commissions? Not at this time. Yeah, okay. All right, so our next agenda item is the budget uh, process moving forward. Uh, we had talked about it a little bit. I just have to get it back over here as I switch back and forth to things. Um, so in the budget, 
we tried to move everything 30 days because of the COVID. And so I'm going to share a screen and then we can discuss it for a little bit. Uh, and I also have to see it at the same time, so I want to slide it over. But the um, idea is that we're going to try to keep as much as possible the, the um, process that we normally use. Uh, but we may end up running into an issue uh, going forward uh, because we're still in uh, lockdown until the 20th. So what we have is on May 14th, we have a, uh, the Board of Ed public hearing and our public hearing on the budget. Is everybody still okay with having that, but we we're going to have to have it uh, by this live stream, channel 194, and Zoom with uh, calling in and email questions and whatnot. Is everybody still okay with that? I don't think the call is working. Because we could not hear our um, citizen that called in. So that that's something that has to be worked on. Okay. But definitely we could do that if we can resolve that. Right. So th what happens though is the reason I'm asking if you guys are all okay with that because if you continue down the chart that I have is that we were supposed to on May 14th have the public hearings uh, in person we were trying uh, but that looks like it's gone by the wayside. The next the next timeline that we have is that we would have had a, a town meeting in person on June 10th and at this point in time even if every some things are lifted on the 20th I don't know if we're going to keep if we're going to be able to make everybody in a room uh, for a town meeting on June 10th and then after that we were trying to hold a referendum on June 24th so by doing these the public hearing on uh, you know by doing the public hearing on the 14th we still have a little time to decide if we can actually use our regular process to get through the town meeting and the referendum or if we have to do what it looks like maybe half or three quarters of the other towns are doing where you take comments uh, you listen uh, in a town meeting virtually and then the board of selectmen makes the vote so so I propose these dates to you. We still have a little time if we want to do the uh, hearings virtually and then wait for the um, wait until our one of our regular meetings to decide on whether or not we make the decision on the budget that the executive order gives us. So I'll ask Jack. Uh, I'm good with the May 14th uh, start date as long as we can do the live streaming and have some call-ins, we ought to get this started and at least uh, let people know we're proceeding as best as possible to have a budget in place by July 1st. And by looking backwards from July 1st, the May 14th date is the ideal date to get started. I know that's a Thursday, uh, be a Thursday night call-in, I would assume, 7 o'clock. We haven't got a time on there, but I'm assuming just like a regular meeting would be at 7 o'clock. Yep. But I'm good with that date. Right. Anybody else have any? Todd? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, I there you was go. working on that. I have no problem with the Zoom meetings on uh, May 14th. The issue that I see we may run into is the actual referendum, which we may need to start working on a plan for that as the governor has pushed back the presidential primaries to August. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to hold the referendum on June 24th if he's pushed back primaries. Yeah, is, is that a gray area for us? Is that still okay? Um, I think it's something that needs definitely needs to be researched. Well, that's one of the reasons I you know, made sure I brought this process forward for this meeting is because um, you know we need to you know the picture is becoming clear about what we what can happen and which dates it can happen on 
and other towns, like I said, have been making decisions to make sure they have their budget in place. Um, they want to have the budget in place, obviously, for July 1st. I know Bob and Bruce want it, or Bruce would like it a little bit earlier, so the tax bills go out. Um, and, you know, our goal, of course, is to try to make sure that, you know, we have a good budget, have a good process. We want to include the public, and we've been trying with our dates, but the virus is not um, cooperating. And it really is, the, as they say, the virus dictating the dates. So we could Zoom and Zoom, but then we'll get to the point if we can't hold a referendum vote and we want to be done and have a budget in place for July 1st, then it would have to be this body that makes that decision. The governor hasn't allowed this, this body to make a decision, I believe. I'm sorry. Steve had his hand up. Steve? Uh, no, uh, I, I agree with the timeline as you propose it, uh, and I think we should try to make it work. Uh, the concern is that on May 14th, uh, typically you go into the hearings and the superintendent will make a presentation, maybe it's a PowerPoint, citizens have a copy of the budget. Now, people are going to realize that their copy of the budget is online. They're going to have to get it, download it, or whatever they do with it, and then we've really got to be sharp and how citizens can communicate because if we're going to take questions, if it, if it works as well as it did tonight, which is not very well, uh, then we have a real problem. So we've got to really work on the technology now at the 14th. Well, in, in the other towns, they're a little bit smaller than us, but what we would do, um, and I might have to get an assistant sitting next to me and whatnot, is um, we would let people into the Zoom meeting. Um, we, we can do that, let people in, but we have to be very clear about who comes in because of the people that have uh, crashed Zoom meetings. When, they, when you give out the ID number and you give out the password to get in, what happens is anybody can use it. And if anybody uses it to come in, we now have what's called a waiting room. And so if you look down the waiting room, you can let people in that you know or seem legitimate, but if somebody comes on like they have on some of the school ones and they come on and they moon somebody, it might cause some extra additional excitement and we may get our viewership up, uh, but we obviously don't want it to break up the meeting. Uh, so we can let people on where they would have the direct access like all of you do. And so in the town meeting, I would say that we definitely should do that. The public hearing probably isn't Something, is something that we could manage too. Um, and uh, so that would alleviate all the hearing, you know, the sounds. Is there any way that they can type into a Zoom meeting a question instead of speak? Yes, they could go through chat. But we also want to make sure that we can, you know, see and or hear, right. hear at least the people that are coming in. Uh, I was on a meeting today, some people called in by telephone. You can, through this program, allow for people that call in by telephone. Uh, you could also allow by, obviously, by uh, the video. Uh, so whenever possible, we'd like to know who's you know, in the meeting uh, speaking so that we know that they're residents that are here um, and we could uh, you know, make sure we hear them all. Jack? Now, the town meeting, you have a schedule for a Wednesday, June 10th. Right. And then the hearing, uh, and, and I'm not sure, Todd, were you talking more about the question of the referendum or the town meeting or the hearing, your concern for getting people on? I, 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 I can see by June 10th, we may be out of this and the town meeting could be held um, analog, like, you know, like we've always done that. Uh, the hearing on May 14th or is a whole different story. My concern is the actual voting on January, uh, June 24th. Um, you know, I don't know if we look into the feasibility of, you know, having everyone vote by absentee ballot if, you know, we can't get 700 people into the school to vote. Uh, I think we need to, to look at I don't want to cut people out of the process is, is my main concern. And I think if we just approve the budget, although we can, I, I think in the long run that's going to 
create some animosity within the town that we just sidestepped that process. And I don't want to see that happen. Well, Sheila is here. Absentee ballot to everybody would be, would you need additional staff to do an absentee ballot to everybody? Depending on the volume, Candy. Depends on the volume. And, uh, but it, yes, it's possible. It's possible. But people are going to have to request an application. People would have to request an application. And then a ballot, it would come back to the clerk's office and then we send out a ballot. So the ballot would have to be mailed back and forth. So the request comes in, then it gets mailed out, then it gets mailed back in. Right. Okay. And we need, uh, I think it's 31 days before the referendum. So it would be 31 days before the referendum. She would need to make the... Make, start processing them. Start processing it. So Correct. So she would have uh, the 31 days to, people would have to request them and they would all have to come in and right. get back out. And it works smoothly. Well, so smoothly when we have 100 or 200 or right. 300 board, if there's eight or nine or it's, a thousand. We would need help. So Sheila yeah, would need some help. Would be a yes. Somewhat complicated. Yeah. So. Okay. I mean, we, we've pushed all these timelines, like I said, to accommodate the process. And Candy, the registrars and I have been talking. Even if we had the referendum on sometime between June 24th and maybe that Saturday, June 27th. The bills still have to be prepared at that point, so the taxpayers will not be getting those bills probably until mid-July, because uh, it'll take a couple weeks to just make sure they're all prepared and sent out and corrected. So we are still talking about uh, uh, some difficulty in, in getting it finally approved and getting them getting the taxpayers uh, at least on timely for this. Right, and that's because we're trying to keep the process of having people vote in the referendum for the budget. That's why I think the other towns have made the decision to have the Board of Selectmen approve, especially where people are having no, uh, no proposed mill increase. So... Well, in, in our case, our budget as it's been presented at this point for town manager presents a, uh, an increase in, in expenditures but no increase in taxes so the mill rate remains uh, exactly the same right because we had some grand list growth well we don't have to decide that tonight like I said we do have a meeting on May 4th um, on May 4th we know we'll know more things that we know right now as we have been doing each and every time uh, so we will do May 14th, the public hearings through this platform in the same manner that we're meeting right now. Uh, we will let people in. We will give out the, the um, ID of the meeting. It will still go live stream and it will still uh, go based uh, channel 194 and we'll still have the telephone so that people that don't have computers at home still have the telephone and channel 194. People that have computers, have live stream, have Zoom, have the agendas online and budgets online. And then on May 4th, we'll know more and we'll decide what we're gonna, how we're gonna keep rolling on, on the budget process. Does that sound fair? Jack? Yeah, um, um, I know there's uh, copies of the budget in the town clerk's office, but generally, not too many people are coming into the town to get them. Can't we put those copies other places that may be more accessible and like at a gas station where people are gonna go or just to have some other delivery because they're not coming into town hall and if they can not get it online, um, what other accessibility might we have to that? Is the library open? No. I don't believe it I is. I could post some in front of town hall where we have pickups right now. I'm, I'm reluctant to post them around town. Uh, well, if people needed one, they could call in and one could be mailed to them. Yeah, absolutely. We could easily do that. The police department, too. It's almost like you need you. a um, newspaper box. That's like register a citizen or American rep and you, they're in there and they can go and take one out. It's, it's, it's a 
protected but Sheila's offered uh, what if we put them in the police department lobby there's a table there well the, I've been into the police department lobby to pick up uh, our, our files but I, I would think it would much be easier maybe as Candy suggested Candace was suggesting a box outside of town hall that you have them meet in the stack and people can go in and at least pick them up like they might do a newspaper. That's possible. Well, I'll let me find out if there's any what the issues with that might be, but I think that'd be pretty easy. I could put it right in front of the police department door, that area. Yeah, because that would be protected yeah. from the rain. Yeah, and try to keep them up. All right, so you're trying to make it more accessible? Yeah. Yeah, that's my concern, just to make sure, because I, I do talk with people who obviously, um, they tell me, well, we can get it online, but then to print it out or to look at it, they may not have a printer to see the whole thing. They may want to look at all the pages. So I, I'm just trying to find an easier way to make it more accessible. Fine, we'll, we'll look at that. We, there's certainly, we can certainly print more of them. That's not an issue. Anything else? Okay, um, I'm just gonna move this over and go to um, the next agenda item is a sucker brook, my favorite, favorite thing. Uh, so what I thought I would do is I thought that I would share some screenshots so people can ask, can understand why I talk about this a lot. This is the picture of Suckerbrook Dam overflow off the construction site uh, back, uh, I think it was about a week and a half ago after we had the big rain. Uh, and as you can see, there is mud and the silt that's there that eventually makes its way down to the lake. This is uh, more of the pictures. This is where it's... Um, click on it where it's entering into the gate that goes underneath the dam and crosses over into uh, Suckerbrook Cove. Um, and let me see, I pull up. This is, uh, this is the water coming into uh, Suckerbrook Cove. As you can see, the brown silty parts that are coming in. And this is it flowing. Suckerbrook. And I'll take that one up. So what they're doing back there, um, and that same day, they're putting this um, major riprap to make a stream channel. And over here is where the water broke through. You can see the water back here in the woods that comes down the mountainside on the diversion. But the rest of the water comes through and actually ends up going through these pipes down here into the cove area. And as you can see, there's houses in here, and then it goes into the cove, and then it comes out around the island, out into the major Third Bay area. Um, so these pictures that I'm showing you get sent to Chuck Lee at the state. It gets sent to our state representative, gets sent to our state senator, um, the DEP commissioner, etc. I share these pictures with the Highland Lake Watershed Association. Um, and so everybody sees that this is the project and the impact of the runoff from all of, all of this is here at this silt fence. But this is what's coming off into Suckerbrook Cove and eventually this follows in and goes into the lake. So that has been my concern when this project, when, when the pipe first broke and over these past 18 months, this siltation continues. Uh, Bob talked to Kevin Nelligan. I spoke with Kevin Nelligan the other day. He's going to look into it. He's, he ha there's nothing to really report on this. I know that Kurt asked me about this the other day, but there's nothing really to report on what Kevin Nelligan is gonna think that we can do on it. Um, but he's got to look at all of the, the reports that we got at our last meeting, as well as anything else that he needs to look at. So we're, we continue to pursue it. So 
So if there's any questions or comments. Jack. Hey, just when you sent those photographs a couple weeks ago or a week, a week and a half ago after that raid, um, I was just wondering, was there anybody from the state that came up to take a look at it? Or are they just relying strictly right now on what we're sending them? And as I mentioned in one of our meetings, I thought we were going to have um, where the state was putting an inspector for this project on a regular basis. Well, they do send out their DEP inspectors. Now, I'm not sure if they're engineered inspectors or if they're just people working for the for DEEP right now. Um, I did get the bid documents. I looked at them again the other day. There were certain milestones and certain things that were in the bid documents for the project that I know the Lake Association is looking at, I'm looking at. I'm sure Kevin will take a look at it. But the inspectors were out the next day after our, or after our last meeting. They like to come out, as they say, after the rain. Uh, but I have not heard from Mr. Lee uh, since uh, the last time he told me he did not think any sediment was moving into the lake. He thought the water looked clear in some of my pictures. Not that one you saw, but one of the other ones uh, where I have a water sample bottle that clearly shows it was not. So um, the, we continue to go back and forth with them. We continue along with the Lake Association to try to uh, keep on top of it. Um, but that's why we've asked Kevin Nelligan to get involved. Okay, if there's nothing else, then we'll move to a new business. Um, and this is, a, this is the OPM Executive Order 7S and it's Municipal Tax Relief Deferral. And I'm gonna turn it over to Bob right now and we also have Bruce here. Um, so I will swap out my seat with Bruce and uh, they will talk a little bit about it and then we have to obviously make a motion uh, to approve one or the other. So I'm gonna step out, Bob. Uh, let me start by explaining that the, the governor through his executive order uh, 7S has said that all municipalities have to either uh, uh, select one of two options to offer some sort of tax relief to the citizens. Uh, one of the options requires uh, significant diligence on the part of the taxpayer and the town to evaluate. The second item requires uh, it is everyone is allowed to participate with, without uh, a lot of evaluation. It, but it, what it does, it allows people to pay three months late. Uh, the second option allows three months late, but instead of the normal interest rate, uh, which is it uh, works out to three percent, three percent a year instead of eighteen percent. So if you don't pay your tax bill and you let it go for the entire year, it'll cost you eighteen percent or one and a half percent per month. But the government's allowed that option to be reduced to 0.25 percent per month, or one quarter of one percent, for the first three months of delay um, for everyone. Uh, we believe that, uh, in terms of the, the stress on the town's finances and the ease of, of management for both the, the uh, citizen and the town, that option two is by far the best option uh, uh, for, for both of us. Uh, so we're recommending that, that, that we follow the low interest rate adopted uh, adoption for the town. Uh, as we said, the first, the first one is also three months. The citizens have to prove uh, that they're harmed or damaged, and this requires evaluation and a lot of effort on their part as well as ours to manage that. Uh, it also is probably more strenuous on our cash, uh, our cash flow for the town, because this is going to delay cash that we require to pay our bills and continue to move forward. So the second option is on the part of both the, both the town uh, and the citizen to some degree, but the town primarily, but it's certainly the easiest and best option for the town. We're recommended that people pursue uh, the low interest rate plan, which is option number two. Uh, and uh, we, we can try to explain in more detail of that because it's just a three month deferral with a lower late fee but it still requires people to pay their taxes. Both plans require people to pay their taxes, but option two is by
by far the, the least at risk financially on the town, and it uh, 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 could easily be applied to all citizens. Uh, there's, uh, I'm trying to explain how to, uh, it, it might answer any more questions people might have on why picking one versus the other. Uh, we can try to explain that in more depth. Um, but that all towns have to take either the first option or the second. We're choosing to take the second. Um, I think some towns, if you're a smaller town, the first one might be doable. And we're just not small enough, I think, to manage that one effectively. Um, and I so just what can we do? It's a, it's a three month deferral with as little pain as possible. And this so also this also applies to the water and sewer bills that uh, we will be sending out uh, later this week that are due May 1st. And it also applies to the sewer assessment bills that were sent out with an April 1 due date. So we need to apply one plan across all of our taxation. Uh, Bruce, could you talk a little bit about the fact that we... Questions there? Steve? Well, I guess I'm not Steve? going to meet him. Yeah, I would move to approve the low interest program as to respond to executive order 7 Well, I have to switch with Bruce. All right, so I'll try to be six feet away from Bruce. Uh, put my little head in here. So uh, Steve made the motion. Is there a second? Okay, Linda, thank you. Any discussion on this? Jack? Sure. Uh, just to clarify one more time on this, and I just want to be sure because I've heard a couple of different uh, responses. So during July, August, and September, if I do not pay the taxes that are owed, I'm being charged this small yeah. percentage, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. you're paying, you're being charged 0.25 for those three months. For those three months, but starting, therefore, in October. Back up to the old rate. Back up to the old rate. So it's just yeah. a delay for three months. Correct. But if you don't pay anything uh, during that three month low interest period and you pay your taxes in October, that three, that the 3% 3 goes away and you are retroactively charged the one and a half percent for July, August, and September for any pay principal payment made in October. Taxpayers will have to make payments during the first three months after the tax or the water or sewer bill is, is due in order to take advantage of the low interest rate program. And this will be clearly spelled out uh, on our website. And uh, will it be sent out with the tax bills too? Will, like you've got water and sewer bills going out now, um, will the information be on uh, those bills the same? There'll be a notice with the tax and the, uh, and the water and sewer bill about the low interest rate program and where they can get more information on how it works, which will be on our town website. It's uh, along with examples of how the interest would be calculated under various uh, scenarios. Any other questions? If not, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. When will that information go up on our website? Bruce, when would you put it up on the website? Uh, it should be up by Wednesday. Up by Wednesday, you said? Thank you. So there just, Candy, yep. just one other question. I know Bruce said the sewer and tax bills are going out. So they're going out this week or next week? They should be out uh, Monday at the latest, I think. Monday at the latest. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, the next item is the... Uh, 29 Bridge Street 
a land swap easement, Bob? You want to talk about that? Yeah. Let me talk about this. As you know, we've uh, received some engineering grant money last year to redesign uh, the uh, Bridge Street uh, and, and Prospect Street intersection by the old factory there. Uh, our plans are we've, we've done a lot of work. Eventually, this is probably not going to happen for we won't see this happen for probably two years yet, the actual work. But the intersection, it's, it's a very complex one. And uh, we're probably, the last option was to change Bridge Street to, to uh, one way going up one block uh, up Bridge Street uh, as we try to, to stop traffic from coming down into that intersection. We'll be happy to show people the plans in more depth and detail. But regardless of which other option we chose, there's a piece of, there's a hole right on the corner of Bridge and Prospect. And it was at the uh, south, south uh, east corner. Um, and, and right now the, the uh, gentleman that lives there is willing to uh, swap his access to his garage to uh, farther behind his house on a small piece of land where we tore down a house at the corner of Maple and Charles. It's literally a very small piece of land uh, right now. It's about the size, not a lot bigger than my office. Uh, but that would allow him access to come into the rear of his, of his uh, building, and he'd be very happy with that. And it would allow us to, uh, to, to uh, change the direction either way uh, for us on, uh, on Bridge Street. So it's an asset to the town. It's a, a small piece of land that has really almost no value whatsoever. It would never be compete for a building land, a building line anymore. It's too small. And the temporary easement was just allow us access across that until we do begin construction on the redesign of Bridge Street. Uh, so it's kind of like the landowner is very happy with it. We're happy with it. The land is of no value to the town, and it's not even saleable. I don't know if anybody wants to take a look at that intersection of Charles and Maple. That, that house is before down. Are you talking about an easement or a sale? A, no, a land swap. We're not going to sell the land. We're going to swap him that lot for the land, the piece the same kind of the same size in front of his garage for us. We're not going to sell it. We still have to follow the same process as we would a sale. So the, the step for sale of the town-owned property on the back of our of our request here. So we still follow the plan as if we were going to do a sale. Okay, well you had just mentioned you were going to use the easement on his property for the construction. At, right. And so, so the easement would be, yeah, on, it involved both pieces and, until we completed the construction. And then he gets that piece back? No, he no keeps, or we keep he, it. He keeps the piece that we that we're swapping out and we keep the piece that he's giving us. So it's a... So it looked to me, it's a, it, uh, it looks like the town benefits, he benefits, and it, there's no cost to the town. So uh, I just recommend that you approve this swap and the, the easement, which would occur after we began construction. So then we would make a motion to send it to planning and zoning? Yes. This goes on. Steve? Got a couple more steps to go. Steve? Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen for the land swap and temporary easement request at 29 Bridge Street to the Planning and Zoning Commission for review and comment. Jack? I'll second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Todd? Unmute yourself, Todd. <laughs> one question about the one way Bridge Street. Where will yes. that be? It would be one way right from the... Uh, from Main Street all the way up or after that? After that. It just goes for a block, which allows the fire department to go right on up the hill. It, it has as much to do with fire accessibility than it does uh, anything else. More of a safety issue. Okay, so That's just not from Main Street, but... No, right. Okay. So, Candace? What happens to Survey Bridge Street? The driveway also exits onto that in that area. Uh, not in that piece. I mean, they've got, and I'd be glad to show you the blueprints in the, the layout. We, we got them all laid out. You can see that. It's only the one, it, it only affects this one house. 
So this is just a process to start. It goes to planning and zoning. If uh, it comes back and we find out there were more issues with the with that area, then we can stop the process uh, before it gets right. to a so town meeting. Correct. There's no final. This isn't a final. This is just the next step for evaluation. Any other comments? If not, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you. All right, and that brings us to. Our next item, uh, proposed line item transfers, uh, Bob or Bruce? Yes, I've got two of them here. Uh, the first one is in for the recreation department. It's a $500 transfer out of their supplies and materials, uh, which they have uh, are going to have left over for heating fuel and membership and dues subscriptions of $5 to get heating fuel for $4.95. So I recommend you approve the $500 transfer in the uh, recreation department line. I have a motion. Todd? Your microphone, Todd. I guess I'll unmute you. There you go. I make the motion that the board transfers $500 from supplies and materials, recreation department 812, to do heating fuel and membership dues in the amount of $500. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Melissa. Any other questions? All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Next one, Bob. The second one, the second and final one, is uh, the community planning and development, the planning department, uh, which is also our building department. I'm requesting a transfer of administrative salary of 25000 and FICA of 2000 to the secretarial support staff of 25000 and the fringe benefits of FICA for 2000 This is really Pam who has been filling in. But, uh, that was in the original salary amount, the 25 that was in the manager. She really functioned as a manager down there and working and spending all the, uh, the ex excess amount of time down there. So this is just staying within the department with the same amount of labor and transferring it to uh, from one empty position to one current position. Yeah. I move that the Board of Select and approve the line item transfer of 25000 from Community Planning and Development, Administrative Salary, and to uh, uh, the Secretary of Support Staff, Building Department. Linda? I'll second it. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? If not, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, the next item is uh, citizens' comments. Uh, if you'd like to call in, 860-738-6958. I will translate, 738-6958. Okay, Sheila. <coughs> Candy, on uh, behalf of the town, I would like to thank Mr. Lee from Cappy's Cleaners who did masks for the police department and the employees upstairs. He handmade them. I know, I'm gonna tell you in a minute. And he did a beautiful job. And that's a concerned citizen. And thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Sheila is telling us that Mr. Lee from Cappy's Cleaners made masks. Bruce was actually had one on. Uh, made masks for the police department, for the town hall staff. Right. Anybody else? Is that everybody? Pretty much the town hall staff and police first. Okay, police and town hall staff. So he, he made them and donated them to the town. And Sheila just wanted to make sure everybody knew that he did that. Okay. Any other citizens' comments? Anyone out there? 738-6958. That's a direct line, by the way. Okay, hearing none is uh, Selectman's comments and reports. Uh, I just have a question, and then I'll go to Linda. Uh, Bob or Bruce, have we? Are we all full with fuel oil and everything? Because uh, with with the, the bottoming of the of the you know they were having to pay people to take a barrel of oil today, um, well, but for. for delivery for made delivery. delivery so do we have any like storage that we could take some 
some gasoline. I mean, it was like at 155 at Cumberland Farms. And I know. I, so we, we buy our... Bruce is saying. Yeah, you know, we buy our fuel on contract. We buy on contract. So the fuel that we're purchasing for this fiscal year that we're in, we sell, we uh, arrange for a contract back a year ago. A year ago, this fiscal year is and covered. So, and so we are have we have a, a bulk purchase of this amount, and we've taken delivery on this amount. We still have this amount to take delivery on, and uh, we will expect we're locked in at that price. So we're locked in at a price from a year ago. Yeah. So uh, with ex with more expected, we, we have to fill that contract before we can move on. Buy on this clock. So is everybody getting together to try to buy a year out? <laughs> I'm thinking of getting some storage barrels. But. If you know of somebody who owns a bunch of rail cars, oil storage yeah. rail cars, we could probably, that's where we could probably park some. Bruce is saying rail, if anybody has rail cars, storage cars. Uh, no, storage no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why they're pay, paying people to take, take to oil now because they're in May because they have no place to put anything. Everything's all full, all the storage places. Wouldn't that be uh, nice for summer driving if we get to that? Now, we might check, I don't know if this is possible, but we have that empty water tank up on Wallen Sale. <laughs> I don't think I'll repeat what he just said about the empty water tank on Wallen Sale. Really that. Kurt, there you go for your little thing, but don't make it serious because otherwise people might think we're actually doing that and we're not. I feel like I'm a, like all those Western movies my father watches that I watch with him sometimes, I feel like that's what I'm doing here. But anyway, Linda? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have two um, p items from economic development. Um, the first is, um, and the most important, today uh, Bruce Stratford um, received information about a grant program from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation. Uh, the grant is for small businesses that are affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, the qualification and other infor, uh, pertinent information about the grant, there are three places, the town website, the second is on the Winchester Economic Development Facebook page, and the third is on the um, town of Winchester um, email service. Um, the important um, thing is that you've got um, act quickly because time is of the essence. The second item I did want to bring to your attention is that the economic development has uh, launched a new um, a photo contest. My notes here. Um, the um, Um, it's on fomswinstead.org. 
uh, you can click on the front page and click on food, brew, and necessities. It also gives you direct links to the business's menu. Um, so uh, talks about stay home, stay safe, stay connected, and support local businesses during the pandemic. We also did post on our Facebook page the, um, the information from the Winchester Economic Development on the uh, live applications for small business that started today at 3 o'clock. I'm going to piggyback on you, and um, the community's been doing a great job in terms of uh, volunteering, helping everybody out during uh, during this uh, COVID uh, virus over the past, uh, I would guess somebody, I think, was 38, 41 days or something like that. And I know that we've been asked to wear masks going forward, and there's been a lot of people that are starting to say things about that in, in general. Uh, you see it on the news, uh, you see, read it on Facebook, and you see it everywhere else. i just at, like to ask the community to just hold, hang in there for another week or so because our numbers of infection, infected cases, not necessarily hospitalizations, have been creeping up a couple a day. Uh, there was an article the other day that Fairfield County may have reached their peak but out in the outlying areas out in eastern Connecticut and out here in the northwest uh, part of Connecticut uh, that uh, the infection rates are still moving, although slowly, uh, so the hospitals can manage all this. But it's kind of like when we, you know, when you're towards an end of a project and you really want to be done with it and, and you think you could like maybe let up a little bit because you're there and it's normal human psychology to do that, but we do need to hang in there at least another week to make sure our numbers uh, get held down and, and stay level uh, because we certainly don't want to um, have our health care workers. Uh, Charlotte Hungerford, I know, is, is all geared up down there, as well as other hospitals out in the outlying areas, our nursing homes. Uh, you know, out, out in Sharon, they had to put a, a, a place out there, and other ones are dealing with a lot of it. So we really don't want to, you know, burden the health care system with a lot more of us if we could just hang in there because everybody's been doing so good. Uh, the um, Neighbors Helping Neighbors has the meal set up. They went up to 60 meals this week. Uh, the Salvation Army still has their pantry open for people that need help. Uh, Candace has uh, uh, just told us about how we can support our local businesses so that they're around for those of us that can, so that, that when they're around at the end of this and so we can help them. So everybody, like I said, it, it's, it's so heartwarming to see everybody helping so much but we need to make sure that we uh, keep our distance, wear our masks, and um, help each other out. Jack? I have not heard anything definitive about the Memorial Day exercises or the parade. Um, so we still are probably two or three days, through two or three weeks away from whether Neil decides to hold a parade or not, and I still am running a poetry contest for the Memorial Day exercises. I have not received entries yet, so that's still available, and that's information on Soldiers Monument, winstead.org site. So, but I have not heard anything about the uh, parade. Okay. Anyone else? Steve? I vote we adjourn. Is there a second? Thank you, Candace. All in favor? Unanimous? Okay, we'll see you all later. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye. Good night. as you can see that unfortunately you're going to have to